What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Reporter. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, when I saw this, was it you that sent it to me, Brian, that there was a possible another rewrite of the Blade movie, Brian? Or I sent it to you? You sent it to me. Brian, when I saw this... By the way, not possible. That's confirmed. Not possible. Confirmed. Oh. Confirmed that there is another rewrite. Brian, I'd imagine Mahershala Ali feels exactly the way I feel, Brian, which is enough is enough, Brian. Because let's recap how this all began. This is how I think so, how it all began. From the reports saw that Mahershala just called Kevin. Kevin picked up the phone. Mahershala said, hey, Kevin, I want to be Blade. Kevin said, Wesley? He said, nah, it's Ali. Kevin said, Muhammad? No. It's that two-time Oscar winner, Mahershala Ali. I want to be Blade. Kevin says, absolutely, let's do it. Um, the show starts in two hours. Can you get here in time? And Blade and, and Mahershala shows up, puts on his hat, a brand new. <laughs> you saw the little shiny sticker at the bottom. <laughs> Fresh. You can see the steam just coming off of it. It was, it was brand spanking new. Kevin's at the Disneyland. He's in the gift <laughs> shop. He's like, yo, can you whip this up for me? <laughs> in time. It has been nothing but disappointment again. And we've been saying, what have we been saying, Brian? We've been saying, well, I've been saying, Mahershala, you got to go. You got to leave. You got to do something. I understand that you need the bag because you want to do other things, probably. I understand that because I haven't seen a lot of work. Has he been doing any work, Brian? I haven't looked at his IMDb. He did that um, pretty well regarded Leave the World Behind, the Sam Esmail oh, yes, yes, Netflix yes, 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 movie yes, 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 that was yes. like really creepy with Julia Roberts. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Ensemble cast, but he was one of the leads. Yes. Of that. Yeah. All we've known is that he is starring in Blade. And now there's another rewrite after we had already confirmed that Mahershala liked the script. And that we were going ahead. What's going on, Brian? Because it seems to me, Brian, that possibly, possibly, Brian, Mahershala Ali is not in the room when these decisions are being made. Brian, what do you think? <laughs> well, I have a rant on this movie in a bit, but let's talk about the news. So the news piece is that Michael Green, who had kind of given us a a sliver of daylight, maybe, in that he was the mastermind behind Blue-Eyed Samurai, and they brought him in to rewrite the Blade script, and that Mahershala was, that kept Mahershala on the project, literally. So if, what Pablo's talking about is, they went through several iterations of this. They, first off, they went through a lot of pitches. Remember, there was a report, they heard a ton of pitches for this that they rejected before they finally hired a director and felt like they had an initial vision. They then changed writers. In fact, I directed I quit, I think, right? One of the <laughs> Yeah, I think at one point ironically, I think Bodomeo, who is kind of riding high, at least creatively right now, because of X-Men 97, I think he took a pass at this at one point. And that that didn't work early on. Um but then there was a point at which Mahershala Ali brought in Nick Pizzolatto, his guy from True Detective. And that was the moment where it felt like the star was taking command of the project. Well, come to find out, Nick Pizzolatto, he was shown the door. That's what yeah. got rejected. That's the report. I was rejected summarily by Kevin Bike. That then led to an iteration of Blade where Blade was reportedly the fourth build character and the focal point was really his daughter in what was basically a female life lessons movie that just happened to include Blade. That reportedly was the moment when Mahershala Ali was ready to quit. I mean, yeah, I would think. So then they bring in Michael Green, fresh off of Blue-Eyed Samurai, 
And he apparently writes a script that Mahershala was cool with. That he, and that's the one that they were prepping the shoot for. This is the second shoot that Marvel fully staged and got ready for. The first time was the one where they fired the director. Now, Jan de Mang has stayed in the director's chair all the way through this, but they're supposedly gonna shoot in a couple of months. And now Michael Green is out and the script is being rewritten with some BS caveat that, oh, well, at least Marvel knows where they wanna go with the story. They just need a new writer. That is a load of crap. If you know where you want to go with the story, you don't need a full rewrite. Maybe you need a script doctor or like a touch up, but you don't need to start over. So you, you clearly don't. This project, as we said, when it looked like things were gearing up, what did we say? We've been here before. Until this movie's up on the screen, do not count it as a certainty to happen. And it looks like this, what they call production hell, just continues, continues to where, the, I mean, I see no way this movie is part of, I didn't think this movie was going to be on the 2025 calendar anyway. It's originally, it's slated for November. But I think it's slipping to 2026 in its current form. And I'm with you. I still think it's a coin flip at best as to whether this project happens at all. What is Mahershala Ali thinking? Because to me, Brian... He's not being given the treatment as I would say a Robert Downey Jr. when he brought in his guy for Iron Man 3. Granted, this is Mahershala Ali's movie in the MCU, first attempt, correct? Movie, but, yes, but he was Cottonmouth in Luke Cage. And he was highly praised for his performance there, Ryan. What difference would I think his performance in Blade would be Obviously, you know, there's that comparison that everybody's going to make, right? But we still think that Mahershala Ali would be a dope blade, but we're not looking at a trilogy of movies here, Brian. We're not looking at this Midnight Suns possibility that they're talking about, Brian. And still talking about that rumor is still out there again came out again last week they want to gear that up after blade comes out so what is mahershal ali thinking is like yo i need this bag because i want to do this or i just want to be blade what is he thinking what should he do at this point because it's been how many years since that announcement? And yet Bye. little to no progress, Brian, on the actual principal photography of this. Well, I think the argument pro is you're kind of, you're in for a penny, in for a pound. You've come this far through this much hardship and frustration that I'm sure there's a part of him that as a performer has a view on Blade that he wants to bring to the screen and wants to see that through. So that's the argument pro. The argument con is, you know, his career's got a clock on it. You know, he's not 27. And so who knows, like what other projects has he passed on thinking he was going to need X amount of months to shoot Blade on multiple occasions and only to find out that it keeps getting delayed. And now that keeps interfering with other things he might want to do. You know, you keep mentioning the, the need for the bag. The bag you're after is a back-end bag. And that means the movie has to be very successful. I mean, is there any case for this movie to be very successful at this point? I would assume so, Brian. I'm sure his upfront is Mar pretty good. Ma but. Mahers that Ma it's Mahershala Ali. Two-time Oscar winner, Brian. I'm going to keep on saying it because it's he has the accolades. He has... The pull to be like, yo, this is dope. This isn't. For me, anyway. And if he's the one that called Kevin and Kevin said, let's do it. And there were no really particular spoken of, Brian, then I guess there, there, were, there lied the issue. Look, I'm going to get into speculative territory and then I still have my rant. The other thing that came out with this supposed rewrite which this piece of it feels a little more dubious because if you're rewriting a project how would you know anything about what's who's in the project but reportedly the villain has switched back to a male villain 
Remember, it was originally reportedly Aaron Pierre was cast and then as the male villain. And then he showed up on a red carpet a couple months ago and said, well, that was in an earlier iteration. I'm no longer involved. Mm -hmm. Then we heard Mia Goth was going to play a female antagonist, unnamed, or Lilith. That's what she was going to play. And now they're saying that's out and they're going back to a casting for a male villain. Now, I'm just sort of pointing out, if you haven't written the rewrite, how would you actually know who the villain is? But this project to me, and I will try to tread carefully, there is a lot of agenda to me in these rumor mills. This fixation with making a Blade story about Blade's daughter that just won't go away. And I noticed in the latest rumor mill hasn't gone away yet. This fixation at one point on making, you know, it, a, it all about a female villain and about female life less that, that to me, that to me sounds like some other cooks in the kitchen with some other things on their mind at Disney that they want to make sure is in this project. And I can't imagine that that's on Mahershala Ali's wish, wish list for how he thinks about this. Yeah. And as we've said, Blade is not that complicated, at least if you want to get this going, you know, and, and use things like John Wick and use things like Blue-Eyed Samurai's inspiration to get a very simple, sleek, you know, action-packed origin for the Mahershala Ali iteration off the ground. This feels like a lot of political noise, to be quite honest around a project that is led by a high profile person of color. And I think as long as that's percolating and quite honestly, I have to lay a lot of that at Kevin's feet because the buck does stop with him. So if he had something he feels is a priority and it's also dovetails with his young Avengers thing that he wants to get off the ground with Blade's daughter. Brian, I threw this idea out a long time ago Listen, I like Kevin Feige. He's made some mistakes, certainly. Certainly. All, and yes, he's been under pressure, Brian, due to the changes that that that, that happened, right? And the uh, deliverables that was asked of him to deliver for Disney Plus and more whatever, right? And we and we all know the result of all that. But now, Brian, you sort of think, okay, business as usual. Iger's back. He wants more or less quantity and more quality, right? He wants more less, entertainment and less messaging. Yeah. Less sequels, but more sequels. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of home improvement. <laughs> you would think, Brian, that we that we would be getting something down the pipeline that is exciting and that things would be rolling, yet they are still on the same path of delivering what we'd say, Brian. Not great and exciting stuff. We thought certain things would be canceled, but they, they're still on the list. And I thought I was going to look forward to this Agatha thing. The more and more I hear about it, Brian, again, why should Mahershala Ali stay on this? For what? I mean... Yeah, Will Smith passed on Neo, but and then he tripped up by doing what he did, and but he his career would have been fine. There are other things you can do. I know this is something that he wants to do, Brian, for for sure. If he had, if he made that call, that personal call, Brian, but this has to be frustrating and. You got Michael B. Jordan and and Ryan Coogler doing some vampire movie over at WB. I mean, I don't know that he'd be the best one for this, but the John Stewart role is open. 
if he's insistent on being a, a superhero, we just got some pretty exciting news we'll talk about about who's actually taking over the Lantern Show, which is going to be a John Stewart led production. I'm just saying it's it's there if he wants to if he wants I mean, to jump ship. But stay in others, the genre. But there are others vying for that position too. No Sterling King. I'm not saying Sterling he's the King. Best fit. Yes, yes, yes. Tony K. Brown is another is another one that I think will be a very interesting choice. But Brian Mahershala How many Ali has to he have zero, I think. Okay, so I'm just saying that if Mahershala Ali wants in on the discussion for any type of role like that, he can he, make that, that call same phone call. Up. That call's getting picked up. They ain't gonna put him on hold. And it'll be the ball will start rolling yeah. instead of the can being kicked around. It's time to make a move. Brian, uh, <laughs> what's happening? What, what so what, what what do you think happens now? Uh do you do you still believe Mahershala does does this movie, Brian? Like I said, I think it's I think it's a 50-50 shot at best. Um and let, let me <laughs> let me look let me look right in the camera here as as I say this. Because I, I actually think we're at the point where it doesn't matter. Because I will say it straight out. Blade is going to be a failure and not a small one. If you, it's like a football team. Football team, if you have two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. This movie, you have seven writers. That means you have no story. <laughs> and I know they're saying the budget's $100 million. To me, that's understated because how many millions have already been spent? on the first shoot that never happened, on all these writers, on the director they fired, on having Mahershala Ali kind of twisting in the wind. They have already put millions into this project that are gonna have to be added to the cost of whatever this actually cost them when they finally do shoot it. Which means to me, unless they're making this movie for close to free, I don't think there's a <laughs> damn bag on this. I think this movie is losing money. And my prediction is this, if and when this project ever sees the light of day, we will not be discussing it in relation to Winter Soldier. We will not be discussing it in relation to Iron Man. We will not be discussing it in relation to Wesley Snipes' Blade. We will be comparing this movie to Morbius and Madam Web. Mahershala Ali, you can't spell Day Walker without walk. Get out. <laughs> Go. Go. There's no point of doing this movie. And then... As the years pass by and and, and 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 you look back and come on the show and discuss that whole that whole period of just sitting and waiting and then getting calls and talking about this ain't happening, that ain't happening, we got rid of this guy, your story was whack. The guy that you wanted, we don't want him. Two time. He's better than this. He's better than this. It's too good for it. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below of what Mahershala Ali should do about his next decision. Should he stay on board this train wreck? And it hasn't even moved. No, you're right. You're right. This this trade is this trade is detonating <laughs> in the station. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!